Welcome back to the Wolf Coaching Channel. Today with you, soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf. And today we're reviewing the advice of one V Shred. All I know about V Shred are his somewhat annoying ads before every YouTube video I watch, which I get all the time and they're like 12 minutes usually. And that he's not very well regarded within the evidence-based fitness community. That being said, I haven't really watched any of his content, including the video we're about to review on a full shoulder workout. So let's review his claims from a sports scientist's perspective. Let's get into it. What's going on guys? This is Vince with vshred.com. Vince for V and the vshred. Shoulder workout respect. Use on your next shoulder day. Before we get into the actual video, I don't think you should have a shoulder day. I think that's kind of a waste of a session. Your shoulders are like three muscle groups or maybe a bit more if you want to be specific, but like by and large, does the front delts, the side delts, and the rear delts. I don't think training those three small muscle groups warrants a whole day. And in fact, from the research we have, training a muscle group at least twice a week is very likely better than just once a week. And if you have a shoulder day, you probably have an arm day, you probably have a chest day, you probably have a back day. And that almost requires you to train every muscle group once a week, which is not ideal for muscle growth. So I'm not a fan of shoulder days. Very cool intro. I wish I had one of those. Editor, hit me up. What the hell is that? Just flex your elbow, you can't. These are quads. These are pecs, shoulders, biceps, forearms. Very cool. It gives heavy 2011 vibes. All right, like I said, today's video is gonna be a shoulder workout and all you're really gonna need are some dumbbells and some barbells. You're not gonna need any fancy equipment that you find in a lot of videos. So this is gonna be perfect for anybody who just has basic workout equipment at their gym or maybe um, you're on the road and you're at a hotel or something like that. This is gonna be using the bare minimum and getting a great workout. It's also not gonna take very long. It's gonna be a total of five exercises, but we are going to be doing a couple supersets in there. Uh, like not sure how I feel about the supersets, but let's see. And it's just gonna make everything move super quick. So it's not gonna take very long, but it's going to be a great workout. But before I get into it, I will say, if you're trying to build muscle and you want help with just easier ways of burning fat and building muscle. I do have a- Fitness quizzes are the worst. In general, and this is just heuristic, if someone advertises a fitness quiz to you, run away now. And if you want help with figuring that out, hit the link right below this video down in the description and take the free quiz. Um, and I'll tell you everything that you need to know to get in shape for your body. So check that out, but let's get into this workout. So. Um, like I said, it's going to be five different exercises and the last four are going to be two different supersets. So first off, we're going to be starting with a bigger compound movement. I like doing that with all of my workouts typically, unless I'm trying some kind of pre-exhaust, which I've actually done in the past for shoulders. But today we're going to be starting with just regular dumbbell shoulder press. And so I have my two dumbbells right here and we're also going with a little bit lower of a rep range. I'm not going to be going super heavy right now on camera for you guys because I got to show you guys proper form and talk through it, but we are going for four sets of eight reps. So this is- Very cool text effects. I'm impressed. I wish we had one, some of those. All right, editor, get to work. And I'll show you what good form looks like. So getting this weight, first off, you want that your back to be pretty straight up and down. I see some people who have it too far back. First off, just a minor nitpick, but to get the dumbbells onto your thighs, onto your knees. I would say deadlift them up because unless you're dead, you're putting dumbbells that are very light onto your thighs, curling them up shouldn't be happening. You can overhead press way more than you can curl. And so I would say deadlift the dumbbells up and then place them on your thighs. Minor nitpick, but just a quick tip for you. Back and they're actually getting a lot of lean or maybe their low back is super arched and they're actually straining a little bit when they shouldn't be. I like putting the bench just to a slight incline, but still I'm pretty straight up and down. So kicking this weight up, <clears throat> getting back. And then the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring my elbows a little forward. A lot of times you see people doing shoulder press with their arms flared all the way out. 
having them forward is just going to put your shoulder into a healthier position because of that ball and socket your shoulder is naturally going want to go forward and it's going to glide. so real quick your shoulder is absolutely a ball and socket joint but there's no reason why it would be less safe to have it here versus here like that's just fear mongering and it's this weird cultural meme that the fitness industry has where it just demonizes certain positions or certain exercises and it just gets spread around like a virus right like you when you get into lifting your buddy who's been lifting for two years and who follows athlete and x or something tells you hey you can't get into that position because it's bad for your shoulders and that gets drilled into your mind and then when you introduce someone you tell them that too and eventually that idea spreads everywhere, even though it doesn't have much actual scientific backing. In this case, I don't think you need to worry about it in all likelihood. You're in that socket when you have them slightly forward and it's also gonna help hit your delt a little bit better. It's not gonna help hit your delts a little bit better. Not sure where you got that from. Elbows down, and also as you drop your elbows down, you're bringing this weight outward, and then but you're also not flaring, like I said. So you're bringing it out and frontward at an angle or forward at an angle and you want it you don't want it to be all the way at 45 but you don't want it back at 90 so about 70 is what i say and then you want to go down to where your elbows are just below 90 degrees and you're going to press back up and this is already difficult because i've been holding this too much but from there what you're going to do is you're just going to keep going through that motion down to 90 degrees pressing up and then and this is exactly what i was talking about earlier this weird again meme that gets spread around the industry of 90 degrees why 90 degrees why not more why not less it's basically just made up and specifically in this case by constricting range of motion to being only down to 90 degrees of elbow extension right you're actually limiting how much growth you get because by going all the way down you'd be getting a better stretch in your front delts and your triceps and your serratus anterior and getting more growth in fact i made a whole video about this here you can check it out but you really want to get a full deep stretch in your muscle groups when you're training that part is almost non-negotiable and then at the top you're not locking out your elbows but you are focusing on squeezing out with your shoulder so you really want to focus on at the top squeezing that delt there's a difference between just straight locking your elbows and squeezing your shoulders all the way up you can squeeze without locking out your elbows so focus on getting that good form down controlling it stopping it just below 90 pressing it back up and then getting right back into the next rep a big mistake that i see made a lot is people pressing that up and then resting for like a second or two at the top or catching a breath or whatever it might be and not really realizing that they're resting for a second at the top and it's just making your set that much longer and making it that much less efficient or effective at getting that continuous time under tension for that. So many buzzwords in this one clip. Time under tension, more efficient, more effective. In reality, just because you pause for a second at the top, that doesn't really make a big difference. It's likely just down to preference, whether or not you rest at the top or not. What I would say generally is to minimize the time you spend in the shortened position, like at the top and at the bottom. Additionally, the whole idea of there's a difference between locking out your elbows and just having your arm overhead versus kind of squeezing your delt. There's probably just not much truth to that. Like we have one study looking at the effects of mind muscle connection or focusing on the squeeze of top versus just kind of doing it. And the results aren't super compelling. There's a video on that here, but essentially it's just another placebo, right? Like there's not a huge difference in this, if any. And it's just another thing that people like to sell you, right? Like it's, a marketing strategy where it's like, no, 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 look, you're not doing that exercise right. Here's the right way to do it. Squeeze your delts to the top. In reality, whether you squeeze them or not, they are being trained. That's just how it is. That's biomechanics. So um, that's gonna be the first exercise. You're gonna go for eight reps. In between these eight reps, because it is a lower rep range, we are gonna be resting a little bit longer. So you're gonna go for a two minute rest here. So a little bit longer of a rest than most of my videos but that's because we're trying to go. All right, so four sets, absolutely fine. A little bit on the high end of how many sets I would usually do per exercise, but absolutely fine. Eight reps, totally fine for overhead pressing variations. I think between five and 15, maybe up to 20 is usually fine because it's not a super systemically fatiguing exercise, especially seated. So you can go all the way up to 20 reps, but going below five reps is not a good idea for hypertrophy because sets just become way less efficient due to either insufficient time under tension per set or due to insufficient workload accumulated per set or that sort of stuff, or just due to insufficient workload accumulated during a set. I'm gonna go a little heavier to start this workout. And after that, we'll move into the first superset. 
All right, so next up, we're gonna move into the first superset. So this is gonna be two exercises back to back. That's just what superset means. You're gonna be staying- That is what superset means, you know, very good. Basically doing seated lateral raises and then superset it with seated front raises with dumbbells. So you wanna make sure that you have two sets of dumbbells sitting right by you. Uh, you generally wanna go a little bit lighter with the lateral raises just because they're a little bit harder. It's, I at least find it easier to, and I'm able to do more weight when I do front raises. So I just have 15 pounds for the lateral raises and 20 pounds for the front raises. If you do 20 and 25, that's fine. If you do 10 and 15, that's fine. If you do 15 and 15, that's fine. Just, I would probably use the first set to figure out what weights you're going to be using because we're going for a higher rep range now that we're moving into more of a isolation exercise. So he has a point here, right? Pick the right weight for the exercise. Don't just pick 30 kilograms because you don't want to change the weight because that's something bodybuilders do. A smaller, working a smaller muscle group rather than a compound movement where we're working multiple different muscle groups. So we're going for sets of 15 reps here. We're gonna be going with the lateral raises and I'll show you these first off. So you're getting into a nice- Real quick, the concept of supersetting lateral raises with front raises is fine. The research we have on same muscle group supersets, like for example, doing two different exercises for the side delts back to back, basically says that it's no better than just straight traditional sets. Now. Does that mean it's worse? No, but it's also not much better. So I don't really have a strong opinion here. I don't personally perform or recommend many same muscle group supersets unless someone enjoys them. But again, it's mostly a matter of preference. They're not inherently more effective. So take that as you will. Nice seated position and my back is not resting against this uh, pad. I'm actually forward a little bit. Whether or not his back is resting against the pad doesn't really matter. And actually forward with my body. Still doesn't matter. I really wanna focus on pressing your elbows out while keeping your shoulders pressed down. So a lot of times when people are doing lateral raises, they get a lot of activation in their traps because as they lift this weight up, they're also shrugging because it's either too heavy or they just don't know how to do it right. So, so as it turns out, whenever you do a lateral raise, it will be accompanied by some degree of scapular elevation or the act of shrugging. That's just the nature of the beast. You will feel your upper traps in lateral raises no matter what. However, even if you feel your upper traps, rest assured that your side delts are still doing their job, which is to elevate the humerus in this plane, right? So don't worry too much about whether or not you're filling up your traps as long as technique externally looks good. So what you want to focus on is pressing your shoulders down and then bringing those weights out to the side and then you're not actually going to- Again, this goes back to the whole meme or buzzword thing that people love to use. All you need to do is bring it up to shoulder. It's fine. You don't need to go anywhere past that. You also don't want to stop before that. Agreed. You're actually going to be working the delt properly. And so one other thing is once you bring this weight up and- What? See, like he's saying the right thing here, but he's just saying it because it's a buzzword once again. It's always been instilled in people who go to the gym that with ladder raises, you stop when you reach 90 degrees, either because it's more effective or because of some other buzzword, like, oh, your shoulder gets impinged or you get some pain. There may or may not be some truth to this, but equally, he's not saying this because he's aware of the evidence. He's saying it because it's a buzzword and that's really not good. In this case, the reason I wouldn't go much above here, like 90 degrees or so, is because of of the superiority of training at lower muscle lengths, you can see that in this video here, versus at shorter muscle lengths. And so if you go above about 90 degrees, you're kind of biasing the shorter muscle length of the exercise. Whereas if you're just going up to about shoulder level, you'll be training slightly lower muscle lengths on average. This would be enhanced using cables especially, but with dumbbells, it's still gonna have a small effect. Focusing, like I said, on pressing that weight out. When you bring it back down, you don't- Don't forget to like and subscribe, by the way. Resting at the bottom. So. Right here, my hands are just completely by my side. I could just hold this weight and basically I'd just wait until my forearms give out to where I would drop this weight. My delts are not being worked at all. So what I like to do is I like to stop about right there because right there, now my muscles are being activated a little bit. And then if I go from here out to there and back down to there, I'm never losing that tension on my delts, which is gonna make this one long set of time under tension. So. This is all you're gonna be doing. Lean a little bit forward, bringing your elbows out to shoulder level. Enough. I've had enough with fucking people saying constant tension all the time. Brother, 
constant tension is not magical. I made a whole video about it here, but constant tension is really not all that. Like, relax. Not everything needs to be constant tension. Constant tension does not increase muscle growth relative to full range of motion. So you can absolutely stop your lateral raise when the tension drops off. But even if you take a second or two to rest, it's fine. It's not worse for hypertrophy. Level back down, never bringing them all the way down to your side. Back out, never bringing them all the way down to the side. So you're gonna go 15 just like this. Nice clean reps. After you get 15. 15 minutes, reps is absolutely fine. Weight. Nothing like said, magical about, about it, right but it's a you. fine rep range. Then here, you're not leaning forward. What I'm not for laterals, I think anywhere between about six reps, maybe all the way to 25 reps is probably fine because it's not a very systemically fatiguing exercise. 15 reps is absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with it. For what it's worth, I do like the sitting down for this. It just makes the exercise a little bit less fatiguing and provides basically the same stimulus. It also makes it a bit harder to cheat, which is also a good thing. I'm actually gonna do here is lean back a little bit against this pad, and then I'm gonna use this pad to stabilize my body, and I'm gonna press my arms forward and bring this, these weights up to a shoulder level. So again, you're not lifting this weight up past shoulder level, you're going just to shoulder level and back down. And the same principle is gonna apply at the top and at the bottom, not going too high, but also at the bottom, I'm not bringing it all the way down here because again, I'm resting. So I'm gonna stop right there because from right here to right here, the difference is that my, my shoulder is going to be being worked. So I'm working that anterior deltoid, I'm working that front delt now. I'm gonna go from here, Press it forward. See, V-Shred is displaying signs of being able to think in a principled way. For example, doing the same thing on the front raise as the lateral raise for the same reasons. That's very good. Again, doesn't make much sense, but whatever. However, when it comes to leaning against the bench to have greater stability, he somehow doesn't make that connection. He'll lean against the bench pad for front raises, but won't do it for lateral raises. I would say, do it for both. Because if it helps you in one case, it will also help you in the other case. It's what's called a principle. And back down, never going all the way back. So this is going to be that full range of motion. And the same thing with lateral raises. These are very similar movements. You're not trying to shrug up as you press this weight forward. So you're not actually, I like to think of it as it's actually not a raise. You're actually trying to press it forward because as you, if you try to press it forward, that's going to help you press down your shoulders. At We've been over this before. Thinking it's a Your raise, traps will be involved no matter what. Shrug up with your traps. So press those down, press the weight forward, shoulder level, bringing it back down. Don't go all the way down to your side. And that's going to be your one continuous set of time under tension for that muscle group. You're gonna go for 15 reps again up. 15 reps again, nothing wrong with that. Same thing as for lateral raises, all good. Of those, so 15, 15, rest for a minute. So this is going to be a straight burner on your delts, but it's gonna be good. A minute probably isn't gonna feel like that long, but one minute of rest between sets of lateral raises is on the short end and you're probably limiting the growth you're getting. Especially if you're doing a superset, one minute of rest between a back-to-back -back set of lateral raises and front delts just isn't gonna be enough to maximize muscle growth. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend resting for that short of a time. I would typically rest for about one and a half to three minutes between sets of lateral raises, so. Don't go over, have a phone, have a time or something, look at a clock, look at something that's going to keep you in that 60 second rest period, nothing longer, definitely not shorter. Um, and he just said aim for 60 seconds, nothing longer, but nothing, definitely nothing shorter. So if you do 61 seconds, it is over. You're not gonna make it. If you do 59, whew, definitely not making it at that point. Like, again, just this sort of very black and white thinking, this marketing bullshit, these buzzwords, just express it reasonably, please, bro. Like, you're still gonna make gains whether you're resting 60 seconds or 90 seconds. Are you gonna make better gains resting 90 seconds? Probably, but why make it sound as if like, oh, 60 seconds is exactly what you wanna do? Like, brother, please, just show some humility. Um, and then you're just gonna get right back into it and you're gonna go for four total sets of this. And then we're gonna move into 
the third superset, or the second superset, the third and fourth exercise. So to finish off the workout, like I said, it'll be a quick one. Um, we got- It is a quick one. Exercises. We're gonna be doing the same thing. We're going supersets here, and we're going with that higher rep range. So we're going sets of 15 for both of these with a one minute rest in between. The first one is going to be what I call easy bar front presses. And so here, this is just a great exercise for that front delt, also a little bit of that, that uh, medial head. And so, what you're gonna do is you're going to have your elbows out in front of you. And I like the easy bar just because it puts your wrist into a little bit more comfortable position. When you have the straight bar at the top, it kinda, I don't know, just doesn't feel as good. So I like this little curve in it and I like to go to the outer, the outer curve of it. And so from here, I'm gonna have my back nice and straight, chest out, and then from there, I'm going to take my elbows and I'm going to press these up. And I'm gonna squeeze at the top. Like I said, not locking out. I said this during the shoulder press, not locking out. You're squeezing your shoulders. You're gonna bring it back down. And then at the bottom, you want your, uh, you don't wanna come all the way down here. You want your upper arm to just pass uh, parallel to the ground. So you're gonna go just about a 90. There's nothing wrong with using an underhand grip and using the easy bar because it's more comfortable. Ultimately, most people are gonna find it a bit more difficult to get into position using just an easy bar and a random bench versus using a rack and a straight bar, etc. But if you're going light enough, doing 15 or more reps usually, most people can use this. However, again, let's not pretend like constant tension is revolutionizing things. 90 degree angle with your elbow, arm just past parallel, and that's gonna be the bottom position. It's funny, because he says there. that and then goes way beyond parallel as well. And this is gonna be like a nice burnout. So you're not going super heavy with this, but you are focusing on one continuous motion and pressing this weight. But again, by restricting range of motion to just below parallel, you're limiting growth. You're eliminating the position where the muscle is most lengthened, and we know that that's most beneficial for hypertrophy. So why are you eliminating this in the name of constant tension? Up and down, without resting at the top, without resting at the bottom, and just keeping it going, and you wanna- Don't rest. Don't rest, very bad. Wanna use a weight that you're gonna be about fatigued at 15 reps after you do that. By the way, what the fuck does fatigued even mean? Either you're training close enough to failure or you're not. Please, like fatigued is not really appropriate here. Make people train sufficiently hard and call it there. Drop that, have a set of dumbbells ready. I just have some 15s here. We're gonna be doing some dumbbell bend over rear delt flies. So here you're gonna sit a little forward on this bench and the reason is because you're actually gonna want these dumbbells to come in between your legs as you go down. So you're actually going to bend over, your chest is gonna be about in your knees. From there, what you're gonna do is, I like to have my uh, shoulders retracted and pressed down. And so if I were to sit up, they'd be back and down like that and I keep them in that position. So I'm not a huge fan of the dumbbell bent over rear delt fly for a few reasons. One, you're bending over so you're unnecessarily fatiguing the lower back, the glutes, the adductors, the hamstrings. Two, the resistance curve of the dumbbell bent over rear dumbbell fly is such that like at the bottom, when your muscle is lengthened, you have essentially no resistance. You're also unable to fully lengthen the rear delts by going across your body. You're just getting a little bit of a stretch in terms of the position, but you're getting next to no tension in that position. And then effectively, the lift gets harder and harder as your rear delts get shorter and shorter. And that's the opposite of what we want for muscle growth. We want your muscle to be trained hardest when it's most long and lengthened. So I'm just not a huge fan of this exercise for a couple of reasons. I think it's practical. You know, most people can just grab a pair of dumbbells and get it done. But I think there are many better options out there like the cable rear delt crossover, for example. The same principles are going to apply as when I was doing the lateral raises and the front raises. When I bring this weight up, I'm not trying to go way back behind my body. I'm stopping just at shoulder level. And then on the way back down, I'm not bringing it all the way back down to where my arms are just now resting and it's just purely my forearms being worked. I'm gonna stop about there because now my delts are being worked now. So there to there and back down to there. So that's gonna be the full range of motion that's going to allow you to keep tension on the muscle group the entire time and it's going to allow for a more optimal set and um, better time spent at the gym because 
like I said, it's not going to be a super long workout. So after you do 15 reps of both of those, you're going to rest for a minute. 15 reps is totally fine, but one minute rest again is a bit on the short end. Shorter workout. So a quick one, but a good one if you stick to the rest times. So final thoughts on V shreds shoulder workout. First of all, like six ads throughout the video. Please bro, reduce the number of ads. I will otherwise probably kill myself. Number two, as far as advice goes, it's not very good. It's just like literally you go up to any bro in the gym. This is the sort of advice you'll get. It's like a, honestly, it's like a four out of 10. Like a lot of things are impractical and not very good and not evidence-based and suboptimal, but equally, at least he's getting to lift weights and that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, I'd say like a four. A lot of, a lot of buzzwords, a lot of marketing bullshit, trying to get you to take his quiz. It's not great, but you know, it's something, I guess. Anyways, that's the video. If there's anyone else you want me to break down as far as like the sports science behind it, please leave a comment down below and let me know who that is. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in that next one. Peace. What the hell is that? Just flex your elbow, you cunt. These are quads. These are pecs, shoulders, biceps, forearms. <laughs>